What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're explaining this hemodynamics question. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're gonna be answering this hemodynamics question in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Before we jump into this, I wanna tell you, um, I got a little, little, little um, present for you here, okay? Uh, I'm going to be taking this video, I'm going to be turning it into a PowerPoint outline that you can print or use digitally, and then come back and watch the video as I move through it so you can take notes. Now, you're going to find access to this in this free uh, cheat sheet or free uh, resources course right here. You can find the link for this down in the video description below. Go get yourself enrolled in that course right there, not just for this video, but I have a waveforms cheat sheet, I have an ICU checklist, all kinds of elements within that free resources that I provide for you at absolutely no cost. Now, if you are looking to pass your TMC and or your CSE, I've got my TMC bootcamp and my CSE bootcamp right here for purchase, as well as maybe you're new into the program and you're struggling with arterial blood gases. There's an ABG course right there and a respiratory therapy pharmacology course right there because we know pharmacology isn't a fun course. Now, let's get back to the question that we're answering here today. A patient in the ICU has the following hemodynamic measurements. CVP, 10 millimeters per mercury. Mean pulmonary artery pressure, 27. Pulmonary capillary waste pressure, eight. Mean arterial pressure, 91. Cardiac output, 4.9 liters per minute. And then, of course, you're going to have this question that asks you something like, what are these findings most consistent with? Here are our options. Right heart failure, left heart failure, pulmonary embolism, normal cardiac function. Now, you can pause this video right now and answer that question based off of what you think it is. I'm going to keep moving as I explain it. Now, as I say with um, all conversations relating to hemodynamics, you must first, before you can ever begin to understand this problem, you must first understand blood flow through the heart. So let's take a look at that. <clears throat> Here we have the right side of the heart. We have the pulmonary circulation where the lungs are, and then we have the left side of the heart. Now you have to, you have to understand this, okay? So if we look at this, then what we realize is that the SVC and the IVC, they dump into the right atrium. And then that goes to the right ventricle to where we go to the pulmonary artery. We then go through this circulation where we go through the pulmonary capillaries and then return back to the left side of the heart with oxygenated blood via the pulmonary veins to the left atrium, to the left ventricle, and then we go out through the aorta for systemic circulation to where it goes out and about and returns right back to the right atrium. Now that's normal. Now I know you're not going to draw that and you're saying, well, that's fine, but how do I use this? Right? Let me show you how you got to think about this. SVC, IVC, they go to the right atrium and then goes through the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery to the pulmonary capillaries to the pulmonary vein to the the pulmonary veins to the left atrium to the left ventricle to the aorta that's that's really what we're looking at now when you think about it like this you realize that it's just a road you're just drive the blood's just driving on a highway and anytime there is an impairment in the highway then guess what happens blood will back up behind that wreck that happens on the highway that's that's what it is that's how it works okay and so what we realize here is we say okay well now that we know blood flow through the heart we now have to understand well what measurements when we look at at, at cvp pap pcwp mean arterial pressure and cardiac output where do we measure those where where do where do we assess these values well let's go back we go back up here. We know that right atrium is CVP, right ventricle, and then pulmonary artery pressure. Pulmonary artery pressure is PAP. Pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, 
Sounds like it should go right here, but it is actually a representation of left atrial pressure. And so what we see is PCWP goes here, and then left ventricle, we have mean arterial pressure and cardiac output. Now, these are our key hemodynamic monitoring values when we talk about this in these type of questions. So now that you know where they're located, now you just have to know your normal values. Because if you don't know your normal values, then you're not going to know when one is abnormal. So we got to understand those as well. So when we think about CVP, we see two to six millimeters per mercury. When we think about pulmonary artery pressure, we see 10 to 20 millimeters of mercury. Pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, five to 10. MAP is uh, average about 90. This can range based off of, off of um, you know, what, what uh, the source you use to identify this with. I'm looking at uh, Egan's right now. This is page 1170 in chapter 52 of the uh, 12th edition. And Egan states that mean arterial pressure range is about 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. So 90 right in the middle of that. And then cardiac output is approximately four to eight liters per minute. Now, again, you have to know these normal values, right? Two to six for CVP, 10 to 20 pulmonary artery pressure, five to 10 for pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, 80 to 100 for MAP, four to eight for cardiac output. A lot to remember, right? Yes, because it's hard. Because why? Because you get to save lives. That's why it's hard, okay? Now, if you're wondering where the rest of these normal values came from, they also came from the 12th editions of Egan's page 1170. There's a table in here, okay? You see this table right here? This table outlines all of these values as well as their normal ranges, okay? Now, <clears throat> once we know what normal is, then now we go in there and say, okay, well, where's the break? Because wherever the break is, you're going to see that the, that the values behind the break, okay, meaning before the break. So if the break is, is, is um, let's say here, if I just draw a break here, then what we see is that CVP would go up, but the rest of these pressures would either stay normal or go down. So that's how you look at it. Okay. So you said, okay, well, maybe I don't, I don't follow you, Joe. Let's, um, let's, let's get rid of this. And then let's look at it like this. Okay. Well, what if the break was here at the left ventricle, then PCWP pulmonary artery pressure and central venous pressure would all rise while your map and your cardiac output would either stay normal or go down because why again, driving on a highway, somebody has a wreck cars back up behind it but past it the traffic is normal or even sometimes easier right and so that's what that's the that's the train of thought that we're thinking of here and that's how you have to think about this to 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 help you answer these questions okay so now let's go back and look at what our values were and see if we can identify the break okay so what we see here is a CVP of 10. Now remember, CVP was two to six. So this is elevated. Okay, maybe it starts there. Maybe not. Mean pulmonary artery pressure was 10 to 20. This is elevated. PCWP was five to 10. This is normal. Mean arterial pressure was 80 to 100. This is normal. Cardiac output, four to eight liters per minute. This is normal. So now look at it. Where's the break? Where does it go from normal to elevated? And we see here that that break is right here. Right there. The, something is happening between the pulmonary artery and the left atrium. And I say that because we know pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is a result of a back pressure from the left atrium. So that's where the problem is. Now we go back and look at it on the visual here and we see that the answer now is that the problem lies somewhere between here and, and here. That's where the problem is because we're elevated right here, but we're normal here. So the problem lies somewhere in this range right here. 
Why? Because pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is normal. Pulmonary artery pressure was elevated. We're going to draw the line just like this. Boom. Left atrium here. Maybe it's a problem in the pulmonary vein. Maybe it's a problem in the pulmonary capillaries. We don't know, but we know that it is after the pulmonary artery and before the left atrium or before the left ventricle, should I say, technically, right? And so <clears throat> what we see, that's actually wrong. It's not before the left ventricle. It's before the left atrium because if it was at the left ventricle, then the left atrium would be increased, but it's not. That would be our PCWP. So it's not. So it's from the pulmonary artery to here before the left atrium. Now, let's go back and look at our questions or our answer potentials. Right heart failure, left heart failure, pulmonary embolism, normal cardiac function. Okay, keep those in mind because we're going to go back and talk about these. Clear all this up. Remember, the first option was left ventricular failure. That's another way to say left heart failure. We also have right ventricular failure, another way to say right heart failure. And then we had pulmonary embolism. Now, I know the last one was normal cardiac function, but we have two abnormal values. So clearly, it's not a normal cardiac function, right? So there's one of these three problems. We can eliminate normal cardiac function right off the bat because we have these two abnormal values any one that's abnormal means it's not normal cardiac function so now of these three what's the best answer well let's go back and look at it here <clears throat> and we think about left ventricular failure we're talking about this area right here this is the left ventricle and if it fails then map and cardiac output are going to go down PCWP, which is a back pressure representative of the left atrium, is going to go up. Now, you may say to yourself, well, why is it going to go up? It's going to go up because the problem is here. So all this blood is going to back up into the left atrium, <clears throat> causing your PCWP, your pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, to elevate. You don't have to believe me for it. It says it right here on page 1172. It said, actually, stay on page 1170. It says pulmonary capillary wedge pressure greater than 18. It's consistent with left ventricular failure, comma, fluid overload. Why? Because fluid backs up. PCWP greater than 18. You're thinking congestive heart failure, fluid overload. That's 100% true. Now, we did not have an elevated PCWP. Remember, our PCWP was normal. So it's not left ventricular failure. That would is not consistent with our findings. So now we say, okay, well, maybe it's right ventricular failure. Maybe it's right-sided heart failure. Well, if we come over here and look at this segment, then what comes after it? The pulmonary artery pressure. And if, and if the pulmonary artery is after or distal to the right ventricle, then if this starts to fail, then pulmonary artery pressure should go down. All of this blood backs up into the CVP. We'll see our CVP increase. Well, guess what? That's not what happened either because we know from our values that were given to us in this scenario that our pulmonary artery pressure is also elevated. Well, if the problem was here, the pressure after the wreck wouldn't go up. It would stay normal or decrease. So it can't be right ventricular failure. And that only leaves one thing, pulmonary embolism. Now, why would a pulmonary embolism cause our pulmonary artery pressure to rise, our CVP to rise, but our PCWP and our MAP and our cardiac output to not be affected? Well, because you get a clot over here in some segment of the pulmonary circulation. Now you see the pathway is through all of this, right? It, th these little pathways are coming out here and they're going through all of these, the pulmonary circulation coming through all of the lungs. And if you get a clot, then guess what? You just had a wreck on the highway. That's why traffic is going to back up into the pulmonary artery, causing your pulmonary artery pressure to be high. If traffic backs up into the pulmonary artery, it also backs up into the left ventricle and also back up 
in the CVP, which is why we see an elevated CVP also on this scenario. That is why the answer here is pulmonary embolism, because we have elevated pulmonary artery pressure, elevated CVP, normal, normal, normal. The problem lies between the pulmonary artery and the left atrium. Somewhere in between there is a problem. The only one of these that fits that is some type of embolism in your pulmonary circulation. That's the answer to the question. Now, thank you for watching. You're already here with me on YouTube. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and also leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback on this video. Come follow me on Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, and LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. And please, if you have any questions regarding this video or maybe another question that you want me to break down, send it to me, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. I'm here to make your journey to becoming a registered respiratory therapist easier. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.